Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I just wanted to come and run my mouth before we get into the mess. As you can see, we got a new background, <laughs> okay? Um, I hate this couch. <laughs> I hate this couch. Quick story. Um, I thought this couch was going to be like a burnt orange color. It looks burnt orange to me, but everybody says in the comment section... My Sloney, Baloney, Sloan said it looked red. My brother-in-law said it looked red. Then he said, no, it looked burnt orange. My sister and I and my mother said the couch looks burnt orange. Um, even Brittany said it looked burnt orange at first, but then she was like, oh, no, it do look red. But everybody in the comment section has said that it's a red couch. Now, this is where it starts to get a little like, girl, stop acting like you know everything. The description of the couch does say dark red. Hey! Oh! So the description of the couch does say dark red. However, even with the description saying dark red, it still looked burnt orange to me. And now I'm upset because everybody keeps saying the couch is red. And I don't want the couch to look red. I want the couch to look burnt orange. And quiet as this kept, I really never even wanted this couch. I was trying to step out of my... This is what I need to realize. This is what we all need to realize. Who we are is who we are. Some stuff we need to change and work on. But for example, I really am into like, like creams and browns and tans and um, stuff like that. I love orange, splashes of orange, maybe some blue, whatever, whatever. I'm not really into like, I just like, you know, I like what I like. You know who house I actually really, 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 really love? As far as a color palette, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, well, when they were married. Like, the couch that I really wanted is like a beige cream couch. That's the couch that I really want. And I saw it on Wayfair. I didn't get this couch from Wayfair. But I saw the couch that I really want on Wayfair. And I was this close to getting it. And I was like, ooh, girl, I don't know. Because, girl, my nieces come over here, especially that Bailey. Girl, she wastes something on my couch. I don't know what I'm going to do. Nothing, because she only a baby. Um, that's what I was really more concerned about. But I really wanted, like, a, I saw the, ugh, I really want that couch. I'm, th I'm actually still thinking about returning this one, because I, I, I really want what I want. But I'm also nervous. I also know that, you know, my nieces don't come over here every day. But when they come, it's like, girl, I just want to make sure that I don't have a, a, an apartment or a place where, girl, it ju it'll just be damaged. I can't have all these creams and tans and beiges in my apartment and, girl, they cut and they leave and, girl, <laughs> girl it's doodle brown. <laughs> girl, I got you. I got, girl, I got, girl, cheese cracker, girl, stains because somebody done licked their fingers and wiped their hand on my couch. Girl, I got orange, girl, Cheez-Its. You know what I'm saying? Girl, like the rug I wanted, it was like, girl, it's just, I, I just, anyway, it's just, it's, I, I don't like this couch. That's the moral of the story. Um, I don't like the couch. I really want to get rid of it, but another thing, another reason why I may just end up keeping the couch is because, girl, it's going to be a headache for me to get the couch back to because I don't know, because the, the delivery process is a hot mess. So, girl, they basically basically only do curbside delivery. So they don't come up to your home or to your apartment. They're going to drop it off of the curb, and you have to get it upstairs. And, girl, I live in an apartment, so it's not like I just live in a house, and, girl, you can drop it off, and I can push it up. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how the delivery would be. I don't know how the return policy would be um, with them dropping the how they drop it off. I don't know how it will be for them to come and pick it up. So as long as I got, I might just end up ke keeping the couch and then probably end up selling this couch um, probably like in a year or two. And then just probably getting what I really, 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 really want. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to think about it because I really want that beige. It's like a, it's like a, I want to say it's like the perfect color. It's like the perfect color. And I just want that. I just want that. I just want that beige. And I always feel like when I see like beige, tan, um, cream, like 
a, that th- that type of style. It just looks so like I don't know. I just love it. It just looks sexy to me, and like it just looks very clean. I love that look. I love it. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna figure it out. Girl, Don Lemon and got fired. Girl, I mean, it ain't really, it ain't really nothing to talk about. Don Lemon lost his job. Tucker, Tucker Carl, Carl, Carlson. That man, girl, let me tell you, Tucker. That that man was ignorant. <laughs> he was ignorant. Um. So this is what Don Lemon had to say via his Twitter. I was informed this morning by my agent that I have been terminated by CNN. I am stunned. After 17 years at CNN, I would have thought that someone in management would have had the decency to tell me directly. At no time was I ever given any indication that I would not be able to continue to do the work I have loved at the network. Uh, it is clear that there are some larger issues at play. With that, with that said, I want to thank my colleagues and the many teams I have worked with for an incredible run. They are the most talented journalists in the business. And I wish them all the best. See, Don, this is where you messed up at, girl. Sister, girl, I know you're older than me, so you got a little bit more experience than me. But, sister, I don't know why you thought that at any time, girl, even though, girl, it was probably rumbles in the jungle, girl, that you thought that HR was going to go, go come and tell you, girl. You know you're on that chopping block. Girl, HR not going to tell you that The HR will come and say, good morning, Don. And, girl, the paperwork has already been submitted, honey. They're making sure all the, uh, the, uh, the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. The last person you should uh, trust is anybody in HR, management, anybody that got to do with the hiring, firing process. <laughs> That's old school. We know that. You thought you had a friend at CNN. You done got fired on your day off. Tucker done got fired on his day off. Everybody just losing their job. I mean, listen, girl, people get fired all the time. Girl, I got fired. You, you done lost your job before? I got fired and got hired back within, like, girl, five minutes. Because they know they couldn't do it without me, girl. Okay? You know, I brought something to the table. I just had to get my stuff together. <laughs> I was going through some things. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, yes, uh, Don has lost his job. I'm not surprised. Listen. Don has been in the news a lot lately. He has. Um, we're not going to say act like Don na- name has not been floating around the blogs and making the headlines um, way too often. What do they say? You're supposed to report the story, not be the story. And Don Lemon was a story again, <laughs> girl, way too often. Um, every time I looked up, it was something going on about Don at CNN. Girl, either... You're getting your time slot taken away. You're moving down to a morning show. They done put you in some um, sensitivity training class. Girl, you done made some remarks that done rubbed people the wrong way. Girl, I heard about those ABUSE allegations. So there's been a lot. There's been a lot. There's been a lot. So even when I saw Don had got fired, girl, I wasn't shocked. I was like, oh, okay, girl, he finally got fired. Not a, not that way, but girl, like if you've been keeping up, you know that girl, they've been wanting to get Don out of the door for a minute now. It's just so happened, girl. Now they probably finally got to the point where I was like, okay, girl, we got everything we need. So if he tries and sue, <laughs> because you just can't, you know, when you have, when you're in a position like Don Lemon, you just can't up and fire somebody. I mean, you can. But girl, you want to make sure that all your stuff is together. So just in case if a lawsuit do, does hit, then girl, you probably got everything you need in order. That's all it is, girl. They probably been trying to fire fire Don for the last year, <laughs> okay? And they just finally got support. And I was like, okay, girl, we got everything together. All right, girl, let them know. And that's what it was. Anyways, <clears throat> let's move on. You know what I be thinking sometimes? I think sometimes. See, this is where this see this 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 is this is where I start to I don't know. Cause I have to try and understand that everybody does not receive information the same. And I also have to understand that when it comes to certain things in life. It does take a while for people to catch on. Um, 
And I also have to understand that even with me being someone who's LGBTQ and I don't understand everything LGBTQ, then there may be someone who identifies as heterosexual, right? Who definitely doesn't understand everything LGBTQ. But I think where the confusion starts to come in for me is I, be I honestly believe there are a group of people out there who have made it their life's mission to purposely misunderstand anything outside of what they think is normal. And if somebody says something or does something that they feel as though they have not been taught, blame it on your mama and your daddy. Something that they feel is weird or strange, then instead of trying to even consider the other person's point of view or what the person may have said or done, they automatically just cut it off. So it's like you go through, it's like you're just going to go through this world living in your own little bubble, not realizing that there's a big world out there. I remember one of my professors at TSU, Dr. Taylor, I took, I think it was African American literature. I think that's what it was. And I remember her saying, y'all need to stop thinking the world starts at Dallas and ends in Third Ward, in third ward, because TSU is in Third Ward. And I was like, great. And ever since she said that, said that, that stuck to me, because people really do believe. That's why, I, that's why when I say certain things on here, I'm like, girl, stop thinking that the world starts and stop on your block. We're not going backwards. But, you know, there was once upon a time, especially when we watched these reality TV shows, and things happen, people start to say, well, where I grew up from, where the block I grew up on from, like, girl, the world, like, there's a big world out here. And the girl, the world doesn't operate on your street. <laughs> it just doesn't. The world doesn't operate on your block. It just doesn't. So I think the sooner that we get that in our head and we start to realize that there are people out there that are different than us, they don't think the same as us, it's one thing when your way of thinking isn't um, dangerous. Now, if you have a way of thinking that's dangerous, that's another thing. That needs to be corrected, right? Um, if you have a way of thinking that just that's just that's chaotic, <laughs> that's a that's that's a bad thing, right? Um, with all that being said, I had to say I like to say this. Kiki Palmer. <clears throat> Kiki Palmer says sexuality and identity have always been confusion for her. I always felt like I felt like I was a little bit of everything. Now, I don't keep up with Kiki Palmer like that, but I do know that Kiki Palmer is bisexual. She, I, I remember saying, seeing that years ago. Okay. So I want to start off there. I also want to say too, for the people, a lot of people in the comment section, yes, she just had a baby. People that are bisexual, <laughs> they are attracted to men and women. And just because someone happens to be attracted to a woman or sleeps with a woman, that does not mean that she does not want a baby. Just like a man can be a gay man and still want kids. I want people to stop thinking that just because someone's sexuality may be gay, bisexual, lesbian, lesbian, anything outside of heterosexual that, that has something to do with them wanting a family, that has something want to, uh, to do with them wanting children. That has nothing to do with nothing. That means they just like Boonchie Cat. Come on, shout out to the cousins who call it Boonchie Cat. That means they just like Boonchie Cat. That means they just like a little, that means they like a little BBC. That's it. All right, so new mommy Kiki Palmer is opening up more and more about her personal life on Instagram. And in interviews, on Saturday, April the 22nd, she continued to be an open book as she was honored by the Los Angeles LGBT Center at the Center's, uh, center's annual ga uh, gala, which took place at Fairmont Century Plaza uh, Hotel. Kiki was presented with a Vanguard Award from Queer Eye star Karamo Brown. During her acceptance speech, Kiki said, I'm so grateful to be here today to be embraced by a community that I've always felt accepted by and a part of. I've always been my own pers person. Sexuality and identity for me has always been confusion. You know, it's never, you know, it's, I never felt straight enough 
I never felt gay enough. And I never felt woman enough. I never felt man enough. You know, I always felt like I was a little bit of everything, Kiki continues. So often I led with masculinity. And as a woman, I've always been met with so much disdain. You know what I mean? Think so, think, I think so much of that uh, came from who I thought I had, to be, uh, I had to be to get great respect, admiration, and love. I, so this is what I'm hearing Kiki saying. Now let me finish. I've always, and I've always, wait, I'm sorry, and I've always really wanted to be like my father, to want to be taken seriously and not diminished because I was a woman. You know, that's always been a source of, I guess you would say, pain and resentment. From what I hear Kiki, Kiki is saying is that because I'm a woman, and we're not going to sit here and act like this is not true, usually women are told that they are not powerful, they can't be in certain positions, certain positions of power. So Kiki was probably thinking, girl, because they are telling me X, Y, and Z, and I can't do this, I'm going to have to show them, tap into this masculine side of that I have, and show them that, girl, I'm going to do what I want to do. Right? That's what I get Kiki is saying. Holding back tears, Kiki questioned, why did my gender have to define the power that I have in the world? Basically saying, what does me being a woman have to do with my position in the world? That's why I get so, like when I, no lie, when I first heard, and the, the clip that I saw was like a 25 second clip. I think it was, I forgot what blog I saw it on at first. I instantly understood what Kiki was saying. But then when I got to the comment section, it was that comment section will mess you up. When I got to the comment section, people were like, oh, my God, they done got her too. what they talk. What's she talking about? Why is she even getting the LGBTQ award? She's not even the LGBTQ community. Girl, I'm telling y'all, y'all good. The comments, the comments are right there. So I'm like, girl, I, I, I instantly understood exactly what she was trying to say. Um. And why does my gender get to decide my sexuality? Because we know that when you are born, they say that a boy is supposed to be straight. A girl is supposed to be straight. Anything outside of that. So, again, when I heard Kiki say, why did my gender have to define the power I have in the world? And why does my gender get to decide my sexuality? I understood exactly what she was saying. Why does my gender have to define the power I have in this world. Why, is, why does me having a, being a woman have anything to do with the greatness that I have in me? Why? And why is it you telling me that I'm a woman, that means I'm supposed to be with a man? Why are you telling me that because I'm a man, I'm supposed to be with a woman? Um, you know, since I was younger, I, was always, I always questioned the boxes I was forced to be in. Like, Kiki is not saying nothing. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, uh, they, y'all, y'all put us in boxes. You know how, let me, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. You know how you may have a son and a daughter and you automatically put your son in that box of being, you know, masculine and a football player and a ladies man. That's the box that you automatically put your son in. When the truth of the matter is he might be a man's man. Well, the truth of the matter, he might be the cheerleader on the side of the field cheering the football players on. Hello, somebody. He might not like Keisha. He might like Keith. Hello? Those are the boxes that we're talking about. <sighs> you're supposed to be a black person. Um, you know, since I was younger, I was always, I always questioned the boxes I was forced to be in. And, and it starts with who you're supposed to be as a child. It starts, it starts that way. Um, you're supposed to be a black person or whatever the background you are from. Um, then those walls should start to cave you in from every angle, who you are as a creative, who you are as a friend. I'm truly so grateful to be seen in this room because I know I'm surrounded by people who know without a doubt what it's like to decide to be who you are in the world that tells you to be everything but yourself. I, I, I got exactly what Kiki was saying. And I don't think it has anything to do with me being gay or Kiki being bisexual. 
what she said made sense and it should make sense to everybody. <laughs> yeah, but again, I guess everybody doesn't grasp stuff at the same time. It's just that that's when I started to kind of get confused because it's like, girl, I ain't the girl, I'm girl, I'm not no girl, I'm not I'm not no Angela Ryan or no Bakari Sellers and just the smartest person in the room. Girl, I ain't the dumbest and soulless either. But girl, I be grasping stuff that I just feel like y'all should grasp. And when y'all don't, I'll be like, well, girl, <laughs> what's the tea? Shout out to Kiki Palmer. We love Kiki. Girl, update. This is Designer. You remember the rapper Designer? I haven't heard from him in a minute. Officially charged for allegedly exposing himself masturbating on Delta Plane. So last week, rapper Designer announced he'll be prioritizing his mental health following an incident that happened on a plane. As it, previously as, as it was previously reported, Designer had been in Thailand to perform at Ro Rolling Loud Festival and was traveling back on a plane when staff noticed his strange behavior. They claim he allegedly exposed himself to a flight attendant um, as a plane landed in Min Min Minneapolis. Girl, how you say that? Mini girl, mini girl, you know I can't even, I said, girl, why me and my sister was uh, cracking up the other day? We were talking about Real Housewives of Potomac. Y'all know Mia's friend, Jack. You know, I still can't say that girl's name. She was like, it's Jack, 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 I cannot say that girl's name. Jack, Jacqueline. And I, I think she was say Jacqueline. Jacqueline. I don't know, girl. Men in that Minneapolis. Um, he was reportedly met by cops who questioned him. However, he was eventually released. According to an updated report by TMZ, the rapper is now facing legal, legal problems over his alleged actions. Um, legal documents obtained by the news site state that Designer is being charged with indecent exposure. It was said that he had his penis out while sitting in first class on, Delta, on, a, on the Delta flight and was uh, masturbating while in his seat. Flight attendants reportedly told him multiple times to stop and had to be taken to the back of the plane where he was monitored by two of his friends. Um, per the outlet, the uh, FBI affidavit says the designer dropped a jar of gasoline. <laughs> Girl, this is my first time reading this. Per the outlet, the FBI affidavit says the designer dropped a jar of Vaseline into the aisle as he was getting up to switch seats. <laughs> Girl, Girl, Miss Thing had the... Miss Sting, girl, no Miss Sting. Girl, Miss Sting, girl, no Miss Sting. Girl, Miss Sting had her whole. But he has now checked into a, um, let me see something. I don't know what's going on. Whatever. I don't know, girl. I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, you know, some stuff you just can't worry about. Sometimes you gotta just go, girl, give it to God. <laughs> give it to God, and girl, it's gonna work its way out. Ain't got no choice. Cause you know one thing I will, one thing I have, no, one thing I will say this much. 50 Cent is ignorant as he is. I remember one time he was on, I think, Oprah's show. I think it was, I think it was Oprah. And I remember him saying that you can't, you can't worry and pray. Like, you're going to have to do one or the other. Like, you can't pray to God and then hand it over to God and still worry. You know what I'm saying? So, that's how I try to, that's how I try to, like, try. Y'all know my anxiety to be a mess, honey girl. <laughs> girl, <it's up. laughs> Ooh, anyways, chum. <laughs> Um, this is what he had to say um, for the past few months I have not been okay and I have been struggling to come to terms with what is going on while overseas for a concert I performed at I had to be admitted into a hospital I was not thinking clearly they gave me meds and I had to hop on a plane home I'm ashamed of my actions that uh, happened on that plane I landed back to the states and am admitting myself in a facility to help me. I will be canceling all of my shows and my obligations until in any obligations until further no, notice. Mental health is real, guys. Please, please pray for me. If you're not feeling like yourself, please get help. 
I'm going to say this much. Girl, um, I remember when, I just I always remember looking at him. And he used to always just give me like, he was like, you know, it didn't go all the way up to the, you know, it, you know how like you, you know how like, you know how like you have a building that got like 25 floors. He always gave me that his elevator just stopped like on the 10th floor. And we got, and we got like 25 floors. And it, it just, his elevator just never looked, it just never seemed to me that it like went up to the top. You know what I'm saying? I don't think my elevator goes to the top either, but I think my elevator stopped like on the 20, like the 23rd. <laughs> then when they get to the last two floors, you know, I just be a little bit mess sometimes. I be a mess sometimes, but girl, I'm up on the, I'm, 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 we, some of us is 20, is on the 20 and up. <laughs> girl, some of the other girls is like 5, 7, 10. Anyways. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And then Tyrese girl. I don't even feel like talking about Tyrese. I was gonna girl, he put girl, I went to his page. He had like a 45, 50 minute video. I said, I'm not listening to all of that. This is what Tyrese had to say, y'all. Listen. Friend and my family, attorney Benjamin Crump, to join me. I'm asking Ambassador Andrew Young the ex-mayor of Atlanta, and one of my nearest beloved brothers and friends to meet me. I'm asking Martin Luther King III, my brother, to meet me in the courthouse. That's what I want. And I want this man to do exactly what he's there to do on that bench, according to the law. That's all. You know what else I'm going to ask? I'm going to ask... All of the other judges and anybody who can step in and help me out to do a specific review, pull up all the transcripts for every father that Judge Farmer has ever had to be on the bench for. And I want you to pull up the transcripts and really pick up and point out his conduct. Friend 22. That way you can set up cameras and you can document everything that's going to be discussed. Because this is all public record and public knowledge, there's nothing confidential about our case. It's all very public. We are going to be discussing Samantha's motion for contempt because she's in contempt of court. We're going to be discussing special master's motion for contempt. We're also going to be discussing Samantha's motion for attorney's fees. And we're also going to be discussing my motion for attorney's fees. You were supposed to pay for your own attorney since you want to argue about the validity of our court case. And our marriage and our prenuptial agreement. 22. <sighs> So basically, Tyrese is is upset. Um, he had to pay. He, you know, he has to pay ten thousand dollars a month in child support. He don't like that. I'm gonna read what one of my friends said. One of my good girlfriends from college. She had left a comment in the comment section, and this is what she had to say: Some again, some. Black men really do the most when it comes to caring for kids they bring into the world. A millionaire with a restaurant built on premises complaining about 120 k a year for a child he went half on, literally. Just disgusting. And for those who don't know, I don't know if Tyrese still has his home, but I know once upon a time he did. I think he still does. I don't know. Girl, you know, Tyrese had a, had a Starbucks and a Benihana's in his home. Y'all make me sick. I really, I really, girl, I really, y'all, y'all make me sick. Like, I just don't, okay. And I'm, I'm getting off the child support stuff, but does a child need $50 million a month? No. <laughs> but girl, $10,000 a month to take care of your child, I hate to even say this, it's really not a lot. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Do I expect Keith, who stocks groceries, 
Are stocks and shelves at Walmart or Publix to pay ten thousand dollars a month in child support? No, because he because he don't make ten thousand dollars a month in child. I mean, he don't make ten thousand dollars a month, girl. But I would expect someone who's a millionaire, who's living a millionaire lifestyle, that girl, yes, ten thousand dollars a month for your for your kids' child support. Okay. Shelter, food, medical expenses, education, clothing, yes. Tutors, travel, um, any type of activities outside of school. Um, yeah. 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 If Kanye is over there paying 200000 that's 50000 per child, then Tyrese can pay ten. And what my understanding was, Kanye even agreed to the 200000 because Kanye knows the lifestyle that his kids live. Y'all fuss too much about taking care of y'all kids. And it's always, I hate to say this because I'm broke too, but it's always broke people in the comments section fussing about what it takes to raise a child. Your child, yes. <laughs> Your child, yes. You don't never hear no you don't never hear rich people in the comment section except for Tyrese complaining about what it takes to raise a child. Cause they know the lifestyle that they live. We don't live that lifestyle. But I also recognize that there are people out there who don't live like me. I told you I, I realize a lot of stuff. When I used to work at Nordstrom, and I would see those people come in there and spend eighty thousand dollars at one time. We looking at receipts of a bitch who just walked in here and spent one hundred twenty five thousand dollars. What the fuck did you just buy? <laughs> what did you just buy out of this soul? <laughs> But when you think about it, no tea, no shade. That said she was buying, she had bought clothes and stuff for the entire family. When you think about it, girl, it's really not, girl, girl, that, 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 now some of y'all about to roll y'all eyes. When you think about it, that's not a lot of money, especially if you're clothing your entire family. And if you're clothing your entire family on a designer dime. Would that be a lot of clothes and shoes? Yeah, if you shopping at Aldo's and Steve Madden, absolutely. But girl, when you buy, when you probably buying ten thousand dollar bags and three thousand dollar shoes, and girl, eight thousand dollar jackets. You see what I'm saying? But you go over there to the you go over there to the um to the uh, designer section and get a few bags. And if we don't have it, they order for you online. That could be $7,000 per bag. Buy you some shoes. Buy your children a couple of Burberry outfits and some shoes. Alice Dunn and McQueen. Buy your husband a couple of suits. Girl, you know, suits can be expensive. Girl, a, suit, girl, a, girl, a, girl, a cheap suit at Nordstrom is going to be 1000 and that's on the cheap end. Unless you go over there to the top man and get you a little blazer for three hundred, some pants for two hundred. Anyways, child, Tyree, shut up. Stop complaining. Y'all, y'all have, y'all want to have these kids, and then don't take care of them, and then complain about child support. Yes, I do understand. Let me say this before I leave. Yes, I do understand. There's flaws in everything. There's flaws when it comes to the to to any system that you can think of. Yes, there is a flaw. And yes, some things need to be corrected. But I, I, I get sick and tired of, you know, another thing I want to say too, I want y'all niggas online to stop comparing yourself because you might pay $1,000 a month in child support to Kanye West. <laughs> stop comparing yourself because you pay $150 a month in child support or $750 in child support to Tyrese. Y'all are not the same. Y'all will never be the same. And I can guarantee you that little thousand dollars that you probably late behind on, that little five hundred you behind on, ain't putting a dent in nothing. Anyways, I'm gone. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye, y'all.